JJ Redick disrespected players in Jerry West's era on ESPN, saying a while back, quote, did Bob Cousy ever shoot over 40% from the field as a player? Did he ever shoot over 40%? Not once. He was being guarded by plumbers and firemen, end quote. Bash the caliber of play in Jerry's era all you want, but the bottom line is, all-time great guards of the early years like West and Cousy paved the way for the future three-point shooters for generations to come. With Jerry entering the league in 1960, you could argue that his deep range shooting inspired the creation of the three-point line 10 years later. So it's amazing that a role player for his entire career in the now YouTube slash ESPN personality JJ Redick tried to widely categorize the early generations as soft. Of course, athletes nowadays are different. The NBA has become one of the most popular leagues globally, but it's out of line to disrespect the generations that sparked the current game of hoops we all know and love. You're about to see how Jerry West just canceled JJ Redick and every admirable career accomplishment from the logo, an all-time great player for the LA Lakers, and also an all-time great executive. Before continuing, according to YouTube's analytics, only 15% of you watching right now are subscribed, so press the sub box for more content like this every single day if you haven't already. Help this video and YouTube's algorithm by leaving a like. Make sure you're following me on Instagram at dflowhoops where I post reels like this one. But I don't got time to discuss. Get the hell out of my face when you're doing too much. See me flexing the kicks like I'm putting. You know that I'm going off aim for the hell like I'm hunting. But really, who that man that been going off and be talking crazy? The same motherfucker that been chopping it up. You know the pretty boy skater speaking, knocking it up. I promise a follow will come in handy for you. Again, the handle's at dflowhoops. After the disrespect given to him by JJ that I mentioned in the intro, with Reddick labeling Bob Cousy's era, which is also Jerry West's era, as compiled of plumbers and firemen, Jerry West fired back in a major way, so I had to make this video setting the narrative straight and backing up the logo. We'll get to the responses from Bob and Jerry, but among seemingly all mainstream NBA media talking heads nowadays, there seems to be a commonly fraudulent narrative being spewed which has been contagious to Hoops fans like yourself. It's the strange mindset that the legacies of players who arrived in the NBA before 1980, or maybe before 1977 or 75, can't even come close to being compared to the players we have in today's game. It's an odd yet infectious talking point from commentators, which shamefully paints the picture that the NBA doesn't properly honor its history. Stephen Curry just dominated the 2022 NBA Finals, which we've covered and will continue to cover on this channel. Having said that, without Jerry West becoming the first player to dominate with deep range shots, the three-point line may have never been invented. The reason Jerry West is the logo is because the guy had a flawless career with 14 seasons played and 14 All-Star appearances. He was a 12-time All-NBA player, both a single season and assist leader. He made five All-Defensive teams and is a member of the 75th Anniversary Squad. West is one of three players of all time next to Michael Jordan and LeBron James with career averages of at least 27 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists per game. Jerry may only be a one-time NBA champion, but he led the Lakers to six conference titles in the 1960s and even became the only player to this day to win finals MVP on the losing team, which came in 1969 against the powerhouse Bill Russell, Bob Cousy, Tommy Heinsohn, plus KC and Sam Jones-led Boston Celtics. Maybe the most impressive fact about his career is that West never failed to average under 20 points per game other than when he was a rookie. You can argue to a wall that he had no competition all you want, but in reality, Jerry went up against all-time great defenders like Bill Russell, Wilt Chamberlain, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Elvin Hayes, Wes Unseld, Julius Irving, and Dave DeBusher. Those players are all at the very least top 50 defenders in the history of basketball still to this day. Additionally, the further you go back in time, the more physical the NBA gets, so while defensive sets like the box and one and triangle and two hadn't been invented yet, hand checking was allowed which made it much tougher for attacking smaller guards. Let me be clear, in no way am I arguing the competition level in the 60s or up until the 1973-74 season, which is when Jerry's career ended, is even in the same stratosphere as what we see in today's game and what we've seen for the last few decades. However, when you think about it, why should that matter when you're debating the greatest players of all time? Last time I checked, Jerry West had no control about which era he got to play in. Bottom line is, 
you lace them up when your time comes, and what you achieve in your respective era impacts future generations. Jerry's lifespan in the NBA gets increasingly more prestigious in his post-playing career, and you'll hear a breakdown on Jerry's career as an executive coming up. But first, here's the Boston Celtics legend Bob Cousy backing up his era and taking a shot at ESPN's finest. But I will defend the firemen and the plumbers that he referenced, and I'll just give you a few of their names of these firemen that I played with and against during those years. How about Bill Russell, the aforementioned, not too bad a player. Wilt Chamberlain, remember that guy? He wasn't bad. I, I he, recall. I, I guess he must have fought fires as well, but in any event, still the best, in my judgment, small forward that ever played the game, a guy named Elgin Baylor, my colleague who also had an award created, a guy named Oscar Robinson, who was pound for pound the best player uh, perhaps in the game. Jerry West wasn't too shabby. The guys on our team, Sam and Casey Jones, a guy named Hondo Havlicek wasn't too bad. Tom Heinsohn, uh, Frank Ramsey, uh, George Mikan, Bob Pettit. How I could go on and on. And, and and we must have had the best firemen and plumbers on the planet at the time. So, And I was very proud to play with all of them. Then there was the Clippers executive in response to Redick. J.J. Redick, a current player who just recently retired, said that Bob Cousy played against uh, firemen and, and plumbers, and Bob came on and, and wasn't too pleased. And, you know, you, you played in that era, and those guys set the table for us uh, to be where we are today. And I was just interested in your thoughts on, on comments like that about your generation and the generations that, that paved the way. Well, um, obviously the game is completely different. The athletes are completely different. And I know J.J. Uh, just a little bit. He's a very smart kid and everything. Look, tell me what his career looked like. What did he do that determined games? He averaged, what, he averaged 12 points a game in the league? Somewhere along the way, numbers count. At that point in time, the players aren't what they used to be. J.J. certainly wasn't going to guard the elite players. And so you can nitpick anyone. And I'm, I'm not, the only reason I'm talking about him is because he was not an elite player, but he was a very good player. But he had a place on the team because of the ability to shoot the ball. But uh, those players at that era, and, and again, that was when I started to see the, the difference in athleticism. You know, my era, I was an athlete way before my time. I had a huge vertical. Probably no one in the league was, was much faster than me. And certainly the competitive part of it, I would put my myself among any player to play the game. Today, also, winning is all that matter. That's what drove me. And I suddenly got better every year. We didn't have the facilities to get better. We had to work in the summers to support our family. AJ should be very thankful that he's made as much money as he's made. And Bob Cousy, who I played against a couple of years, not very long, I just think it's very disrespectful myself. Jerry's an absolute legend for that take, and the funniest part is, as much as JJ has to say, which isn't all bad, I think Reddick's a solid analyst, but he can't really respond here, because West is literally the NBA logo. As an executive, Jerry drafted Magic Johnson and traded for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, fueling the LA Lakers to five championships in the 1980s. He was the president of basketball operations in LA up until the Kobe and Shaq era, where Jerry was responsible for his sixth championship as an executive. From 2002 to 2007, he was in charge of the Memphis Grizzlies, keeping them in Memphis in their early years, retiring for four years before joining the Warriors franchise in 2011. And alongside Bob Myers, West was crucial in helping build up the Warriors into what they are today, as in the midst of Jerry's time in the Bay Area, the Dubs drafted Klay Thompson and Draymond Green, plus signed Kevin Durant in free agency. Now in charge of delivering the LA Clippers their first ring, Jerry's an eight-time champion in the front office already, giving him nine total championship rings. Considering ESPN's Redick has a 13-point-per-game average and zero career accomplishments to his name on Basketball Reference, maybe it's time for JJ to enjoy a slice of humble pie. But for takes on national television, disrespecting the era which inspired everything, embracing some modesty is much needed for the former sharpshooter. 
Who was right in your opinion, JJ or Jerry? Best answer now below in the comments gets next video shout out. The top 5 commenters by September 21st earn free NBA merchandise of their choosing, so compete in Community Speaks by leaving your take on the question. Two shoutouts for my last two uploads go to Boston Haltane and Dylan Popoff. Pause to read their answers along with the honorable mentions.